let me know. If you don't have a camera, that's fine. And then we will make sure we take that into attendance. You telling me in the chat lets me know that you're here. OK, um, the session's recording. I'm just going to flip my camera down right now so you guys can see the table. Change the resolution. There you go. All right, so if you haven't done so yet, uh, make sure you have something to write with. Um, any of these supplies will work great. Um, so I have pencils and markers and stuff. And your workbook. If you don't have a workbook, like I said before, a blank sheet of paper will work just as fine. So here we go. So first off, if you don't, haven't done so yet, if you want to pin me so I'm bigger on your screen, just click my hand right here, and then a pin should uh, show up, and then I'll become bigger on your screen. Now with that said, here we go. You should have wrote down your name on the front already. If you haven't done so yet, do that right now. Otherwise, if you still need to print this out, you can do that later. If you don't know where this came from, it was during the second student material pickup, I think in the beginning of September, I believe. So that's when people got this workbook, if you guys were wondering how people got it without printing it. Okay. So with that said, let's open it up, and let's go over what's going on here. All right. This is going to be an overview of the elements of art and the principles of design today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go over as quick as possible each of these pages. So here we go. So the first page says elements of art, and it goes over every single one of them. And the reverse side of the cover should have a blank rectangle that looks like this. If you don't have this packet, a blank sheet of paper will work just as well. Last class, I gave an example of how this works with just a piece of paper. So again, if you don't have the packet, a blank sheet of paper like this works just as fine. So here we go. I have a marker. And what I'm going to do with my blank section over here, I'm going to write down all the elements of art over here so I can have examples for each. So let's follow along. First one is line. And then what you're going to do once you're done writing that, I want you guys to create a dividing line so you have space to draw an example. OK, so do that right now. Next one. Shape and form, shape, dash, form. I'm going to make sure this section's a little bit bigger. Next one is color. You can't see. You can't see me, uh, Layden. Uh, try to log in, log, log in, log back out, or vice versa. Sorry about that. See if that works. OK, there's color, texture. Now, before I go to the bottom, I'm going to make space and value uh, a little bit different by dividing it in half like this instead. But if you divided it uh, horizontally, that's fine, too. I just found that this way is a little bit easier. All right, there we go. Now I'm set for the day. Okay, I divided up my section of this paper over here. And again, if you don't have this packet, this session will work Great with just a blank sheet of paper, like how I did over here. I did this last class. All right, so here we go. First step, take anything you want to draw with. I'm going to pick this marker right here. I want you guys to do as many examples of line in this blank space. So over here, I'm just going to draw wavy lines. I'm sorry, Layden. I don't know why you can't see. Can you guys, can you hear me, Layden? All right. Uh, try to pin me, Raiden. Um, let's see. Zigzag. Uh, let's see. Wavy. Dotted lines. And I think that's all I can fit. Can't fit anymore. All right. Once you're done with that element of art, the next one is called shape and form. They are together because they're both different types of shapes. The only difference is, is that one's two-dimensional. And the other half is three-dimensional. So I want to change my color just so it could be a little more fun. I'm going to draw two-dimensional first. So I'm going to do a circle, square, and triangle maybe. And then for my three-dimensional form, I'll use those exact same shapes, but over here. So here's my circle. I'm going to take the sides and put them in an angle, and then curve the back end. For the square, I'm going to make a square, and then take three sides, or three pointy parts, put them to one side, and I'm going to connect the dots right here, or connect the points to make a cube. And for my last one, triangle, I'm going to make a normal triangle, extend one of the bottom ends, 
and then just connect this to the top to make a pyramid. Okay, shape and form, done. All right, for color, you can either write down the words or you can do what I'm about to do. I'm gonna take a pencil or a marker. I'm gonna draw a circle plus a circle equals a circle. And then with that, uh, you might not have this readily available, but I do. I have some primary colors. I have some secondary colors right here. So I'm just gonna pick some random primary colors and then see what they equal. So why don't I do red? Red plus yellow equals orange. And again, if you don't have colors readily available, uh, you could just write down the words instead or the first initial of the word. So that's what they did over here. So you can kind of cheat by writing the letters. Next one is texture. Texture is smooth, rough, hard, soft, bumpy, jagged, and woven. And there's a lot more than that. So with my example, you can do any of those ones that you see on the other side. So I'm going to do this one right here, kind of like jagged. That was like rough too. And then I'll do an example for soft. So maybe I'll just draw a cloud with a bunch of wavy lines in the middle. There you go. That's the best example I could do for a texture of soft. Um, so space, there's four examples here that they gave you. There's more than this though. There's smaller in the distance. There is filled the whole paper. So kind of like a cropped version. Uh, shows perspective. So kind of like the first example, but there's a dot in the middle. I'll talk about that later. Um, and then overlapping shapes. So my best example for me to do is probably just do overlapping shapes. So what I'm going to do is just pick random colors here. Maybe I'll do a circle. Maybe I'll do a rectangle somewhere. So one's on top of the other one. Maybe I'll do a triangle. There you go. Everything's overlapping, and I kind of get the point already. This is great. All right. Next one is value. Now, we will talk about this next week when it comes to value. But for my example, I'll just do two. You don't have to do two, two examples. I'm just going to do one example. Or Sorry, you could do one example. I'm going to do two. I'll explain why I'm doing two. So if you have a pencil or a crayon or a color pencil, it'll be a lot easier. So the reason why I say that is because if you have these materials, such as a pencil, crayon, or a color pencil, you can kind of just use the idea of pressure to go from light to dark or dark to light. So I'm pressing hard, and I'm pressing lighter, 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 all the way light, and barely pressing the paper to go like that to show value. And the reason why I did two is because, say, for instance, I don't have any of those materials. I only have markers readily available. There's a way how to do it with marker. With marker, and I think we're doing it like next week. Yeah, not to, not this week. We're doing it next week. But the way to do with marker is called something called hatching. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do vertical lines, so really close together like this. And then as I go down the line, I'm going to go making lines going further and further apart. So there's lines really close together. And it's getting further apart, further apart, and then further apart. There. That's called hatching. All right. So this part is done. OK. Um, I only have about four minutes left. So what I'm going to do is going to go over the next part real quick. I don't want you guys to fall behind versus the other class. The other class already did this as well. OK, so here we go. Principles of designs. Uh, the principles of design are pattern, emphasis, variety, unity, balance, rhythm and movement, and proportion. I want to talk about each and every one of these. So pattern is basically the repetition of the elements of art. So for instance, if like the shapes are repeating, the lines are repeating, just like how in this example, that's called pattern. You guys should know that from second grade. Emphasis. Emphasis means the focus of the main idea that grabs your attention. So if you have a picture of like a landscape and you see the Eiffel Tower, you can easily tell it's Paris, right? So that's called emphasis. Variety means an assortment of lines, shapes, colors, and other elements of art in the artwork. So basically, all this mixed together is called variety. Unity is called, or unity and balance, I should say, is how the elements of art 
work together, how they fit together, and how the works looks complete. It's a little bit more harder to explain to fifth grade. But here's some examples of balance. They're symmetrical, kind of like how we did in second grade with the, uh, the animal, sorry, the bugs. You guys remember that from second grade? Asymmetrical and radial. We will do radial, radial this year. I just haven't figured out how to do it in an e-learning setting. I'll figure that out in a little bit. Next one is called rhythm and movement. Basically, a regular repetition of the elements of art to create a sense of rhythm and or movement. And last but not least, we did this already, which was proportion. And you can see an example of a self-portrait over here. So basically what proportion is, how parts fit together to make a whole. Size relations, basically. And there we go. So if we had time, I would ask you guys to do an example over here on this blank spot over here. But um, since we only have two minutes left, if not less, um, I'm not going to have you guys do that right now. So I did promise you guys more time to show off some artwork. So if you have some artwork right now that you'd like to share with the class, uh, do me a favor, just keep yourself muted and just hold it up to the camera. And then that way I can just screenshot, screenshot my whole entire screen and I can uh, look at it later. So I see Riley showing her uh, vertical landscape. Gabriel's about to open a sketchbook. Zachary's holding up a picture right now. Um, a bunch of people are about to get ready to hold up some artwork. I see Gabriel's sketchbook now. Awesome. All right, I'm about to take the screenshot soon. So if you want to hold up your artwork now, now's the time to do so because we only have less than a minute now. And then I'm going to have to ask you guys to sign off. Landon, good job. Adeline, wow, that was really good. All right, I'm going to take the screenshot right now. All right, there we go. Nice, Brandon, awesome. Devin, nice. Andres, nice. Ethan, cool. I see your ceiling. Never mind. I thought that was a picture. Here's your ceiling. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, stop the recording. So the recording goes.